I want to hit on the public square in a second, but Lenny, I know that um, when you and I spoke at lunch, you were talking about things you would have done differently yeah. in your experience as a politician in the Philippines um, with President Duterte, right? And, and I'd love to, since we have about uh, almost 20 minutes, um, just kind of go into some of your learnings as a person who experienced this, where the state actually plays a major role in the disinformation campaign and how you thought about that experience. You know, I was, I was telling you during lunch um, that we committed a lot of mistakes in responding to disinformation. Um, we, it, it started really bad in 2016 um, when, I, when, I, when I won as Vice President of the Philippines. But the first mistake that we committed was that um, my, initial, my initial stance at that time was their fake news don't dignify. So um, we, we thought it was the right thing to do. We thought it was when, when you go low, we go high. But we realized too late that it was the wrong response. Because when we tried correcting fake news, I think three, three years hence, it was too late. It was like we were trying to correct, but the fact-checking was just being heard in our own echo chambers. Because there's a separate reality already. It's like we could not penetrate into the into the cells that have been um, created because of this information. And, you know, we have supporters. And our supporters were also um, crying, fight fire with fire. So some of them were also trying to fight, um, fight all the disinformation with um, trying to correct um, everything on social media. But we felt like it just added to the polarization. And we know, uh, as, as was said earlier, it, it's the populist playbook. That you agitate one party and rage the other. And when, when everything is so polarized, then there's no common baseline of fact anymore. There's no chance for people to, to discuss and to, to do um, you know, a, a, a fair amount of discourse. And, and we tried looking at best practices. Actually, we, we, we looked into Turkey's um, radical love. It's, uh, the, the radical love campaign of the opposition in Turkey. We tried that. And I think to a very large extent, we succeeded in some way. At first, we were trying to tell our supporters, be more kind, be more um, calm, be more understanding. But um, it, it was difficult. It was difficult because um, everything was so polarized already. But I think we made a, a breakthrough when we brought the campaign out of social media already. Mm. But it was too late. It was during the campaign. Uh, we, did, we did, we called it tao sa tao, puso sa puso. It means person to per person, heart to heart. So it was encouraging our supporters to go out of social media Try to talk to as many people who do not share your values, who do not share your beliefs, you know, and try to discuss in a very calm manner. And we have made a lot of breakthroughs. But as I've said, um, time was too short. And our campaign now is to continue those conversations. Um, start with your traditional, traditional networks like families, or work, school. And then go out of the communities. Um, during the campaign, we were able to um, form a large number of volunteers because of that. A lot of people felt um, very much grounded because of the conversations with people who were from a different perspective, who believed in other things um, different from what they, their beliefs are. So it's, it's the track we're trying to take, uh, bring the conversation out of social media. Uh, there are two groundbreaking um, researches about disinformation in the Philippines. It was headed by a group of um, Filipino sociologists and academics. Um, the head is Jonathan Ong, who's a Shorenstein Fellow at the um, Harvard Kennedy School. Um, and, and those two researches are groundbreaking in the sense that Number one, it unmasked the entire uh, disinformation operations in the Philippines. And number two, the latest one is really trying to frame everything as not just disinformation, but a, a broader influence operations already. That there's a set of, um, set of recommendations that would guide us as we go along. So it's not like six years ago when we were groping in the dark on what to do. 
Right now, we have learned from our lessons and we're moving forward.